Okay, so we're going to go through a problem that states a Ferris wheel with a radius of 40 completes one revolution every 60 seconds. The rider's board five feet above the ground. Part A says, let's model this with an equation. Okay, well, what we're going to have to realize is that having diagrams is really important for this. So let's draw a circle with a line down the middle just for our stand and then boom, there we go. And then let's draw our graph off to the side here that's labeled time on the x-axis and height on the y-axis. Okay, so what information did they give us? Well, they said uh, 40 feet is the radius, so what we can do is we can actually divide our Ferris wheel into sections from the top to the middle, and then from the middle to the bottom, and then from the bottom to the bottom of the base here, or the ground. And they say, okay, well, what does each of those correspond with? From the example or from the problem, they say that our radius is 40. So what we can actually do is just sub in 40 here and 40 here, because those areas are 40. And then they say from the bottom of the Ferris wheel to the ground is five. Perfect, okay, so we got all that info, but then there's one more thing we should realize. Well, what's the distance from the top of the Ferris wheel down to the base? So from here down to there. Well, we'd say that that's the entire, both radiuses, so 40 plus 40, and then the distance to the ground, which is five, so that gives us 85 is the total distance. Okay, so now we wanna look at our graph, and we say, well, how are we gonna graph this? If 85 is our maximum height, and five is the height we start at, then we need to consider the time, which is 60 seconds to reach one complete loop, and 30 seconds would represent half of that. So let's plot these points. We have, we start at five and zero. We halfway or 30 seconds in, we reach the max. And then at the end, we're five, we're at the same height that as uh, the five feet off the ground, but at the 60 seconds. And then what we can do now is we can basically just complete, connect the dots here and create our sine curve. Perfect. Okay, so that's all just the diagram specific stuff, but that's not really going to help us out yet because we don't have enough information. So let's start solving for our info. Well, if our general equation is written as y is equal to a sine bx minus c plus d, then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to solve for a, b, c, and d. a is solved as a is equal to maximum minus the minimum divided by two, which was 85 minus our five over two, which is equal to 40. Okay, so that makes sense because that's our amplitude. That's the mid, or like that's how high the, from the middle to the bottom or from the middle to the top is. And that's just simply our radius. So that should make sense. And then we say that our D value is max plus min over two, which is equal to 85 plus five over two, which is just equal to 45. And that's actually equal to our midpoint. So we label our midpoint on our graph right here, which would be the 45. We can dot it because that's gonna be our midpoint here. And then that actually tells us that the radius that was existing on this part of the graph here, or the wheel part of the diagram, that actually just represents the amplitude, which is the distance from five to 45 and 45 to the 85. So we say 40 goes here and 40 goes here. Okay, perfect. So now we have our graph set up, we have our amplitude, we have our midpoint. What else do we need? Well, we need our B value, which corresponds with our period. So we say that our period or one complete revolution was 60. So we can say that 60, which is equal to our period, I'll just write it as PER, is equal to two pi over B. Thus by rearranging, we say that B is equal to two pi over 60, which is also equal to pi over 30. Okay, and now we have one last value to solve for. That's our C value. And so similar to vertex form, if you recognize how vertex form kind of has this similar function, we say that the C and the D actually are our coordinates for our starting point. 
a typical sine graph would have this type of look to it. It's going to start at zero and kind of do this. And so what's, if we value our x, uh, inter or our x axis as the starting point, then where did our x axis shift to or where did our midpoint shift to? Our midpoint, which was the x axis here for a regular sine function, it shifted up to 45. So now our new starting point is technically right here on the midpoint line and then starting the sine wave. And where is that? Well, technically, we just divide our normalized type curve into four sections. So we, we can divide those into four equal sections, which means 15 is actually just our C value. So I'll write that right below here. Perfect, so C is 15. And now what we're gonna do is just piece them all together here. Okay, so we said our A value was 40, our D value was 45, which was our midpoint, our C value was equal to 15, which was our starting time, or our starting point of our sine wave, our typical sine wave, and then our B value was pi over 30. So taking in all this information, we can actually just write our general equation that we had as y is equal to a, which was 40, sine bracket pi over 30. I'm going to write it exactly how you're supposed to write it in your calculator. Bracket x minus 15, bracket, because we've got to close that one on the outside, plus 45. Perfect. Okay. So... When we ha now have it in this form, we're going to say that we have it, we've solved for that uh, modeling with an equation. We've taken our two diagrams, we've seen what we need, we've solved for what we have, and then now we have a general equation here. Okay, so now let's solve for B. That's right, B here, perfect. Okay, so B specifically asks, determine the height at 40 seconds. So when we were looking at our graph, we would say that we're going to look along the x-axis and where 40 is, we want to find that height. But we we can literally just model this through our equation because we said if y, which is also equal to the height, is equal to 40 sine pi over 30 bracket x, and x is also equal to time, but I'm just going to write it above instead, minus the 15 plus 45, if we want to find the height at 40 seconds, what are we doing? Well, we're just technically subbing in 40 for x. So our equation would become 40 sine pi over 30, 40 minus 15, plus 45. So we can do it two ways. One would be put it in our calculator. And what we can do is we can actually just type in this function in our y1. Then you want to press uh, second value and then put in x equals 40. Click enter and you'll get your solution. And that's going to give you some form of solution. And then the other one would just be to go algebraically. In this case, it's not going to be often that you would be asked to do this algebraically because it's it's not that it's tough, but you can literally just enter this into your calculator because simplifying this, the only thing we can really do to simplify it would be combine these two within the brackets. But other than that, uh, you're still just going to be entering it in basically on the main screen. On the main screen. And then so when you enter this in, you're just going to get an answer of when you do the, sec the y1 second trace value x equals 40, that's going to give you a height of 65 feet. And we always phrase it in a sentence, 65 feet at 40 seconds. Okay, and last but not least, part C. So they want to say... When will a rider first reach 50 feet? Okay, so what we're going to do in this equation is that instead of subbing in some time value or some x value in B, now we're subbing in an h value or a y value this time. 
So from our general equation, we said that y is equal to 40 sine pi over 30 x minus 15 plus 45. Okay, and now when will the rider reach, his, reach 50 feet? They're asking for what time value or what x value. So technically this is going to look like 50 is equal to sine uh, sorry, 40 sine, let's erase that, it's going to equal to 40 sine pi over 30 x minus 15 plus 45. And now what we do is we're going to say, well, we can technically simplify this algebraically, so that's one option, use algebra. And the second one would be type the first part into y1, so y1 is equal to 50, and y2 is equal to your other component, so that second half, the 40 sine dot dot dot, this component, and then you're going to say second trace and intersect. For the sake of the video, we're going to try and do this algebraically and then solve for a solution here. So what we're gonna first do is we're gonna take this 45 from this side, so minus 45, and bring it to this side as well, minus 45. Then we're gonna rewrite our equation as we have five on this side is equal to 40 sine pi over 30 x minus 15. Okay, and then the next solution, or the next step in the solution would be divide by that 40 so we get 1 8 is equal to sine pi over 30 x minus 15. Okay, and then we want to inverse our sine. So that's going to leave us with sine inverse 1 8 to get it off the right side is equal to pi over 30 x minus 15. All right, and then we're going to divide by that pi over 30 to get it to the other side. Let's continue just off to the side here. So now we have sine inverse 1 8 over pi over 30. And then we have that equal to x minus 15. And our final solution is to add the 15 to both sides. So x is equal to sine inverse 1 8 over pi over 30 plus 15. And then that's going to give us x is equal to, if we round it, we're going to get roughly about 16 seconds. And that's 16 seconds when we first reach 50 feet. 